Well, thank you, Dr. Kim Gambino, for being here. I'm really looking forward to talking to you and getting to know you better and just sharing uh, the knowledge and wisdom and insight that you have uh, of the chiropractic world. And I wondered if you could maybe give uh, our audience a brief introduction to yourself and say a little bit about what you're up to these days. Sure. Um, well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate this. We have an event coming up and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but I'm, I'm really excited about having this move forward and uh, actually just having the very first one that just to get it started. I think once we get the ball rolling, it'll be pretty easy. So I'm a chiropractor. I graduated from Life University in 91, um, met my husband there. We um, got married, moved to New York, started our first practice out on the East End of Long Island, stayed there for five years, uh, had a couple children, home births, unassisted home births. So one of our, our philosophies is that uh, the power that made the body heals the body. I mean, it's probably our main philosophy. And, you know, my body was designed to have babies. So when we decided to stay home and have our kids. And, and because of the transition of the graduation and moving to New York, that we weren't able to get a midwife to support our home birth. So we decided to stay home and do it by ourselves. So that's how we started the first one and then the second one. And then we had the, the third one in Georgia. And then after five years, we moved back down to the Atlanta area because we really wanted to work with students. And that was really important to us and moved back down there. But my husband being from Queens, New York, uh, not really into the South too much. And so at that point, we decided we were going to move back up to New York, but came out to California, fell in love with it, said we need to be there. And within five weeks, moved to Napa Valley. Uh, during that time, we fought the California board because they wouldn't give us a license for two years. And we were living in Napa Valley. We had a practice that we worked in, but we had to have somebody physically own it because we couldn't have our practice in our name. So we had to hire somebody to own our practice. And after about two years, we just like threw our hands up and said, we're done. We can't fight the board, the California board. And we left and moved to West Virginia because that's where I grew up. And then at that time, five weeks after we moved to West Virginia, and we said, we're never, ever, ever, ever moving again. The California board calls and said, uh, you guys can move, you know, you can get a license in California. And, and we laughed, because we we're like, we're not, we're staying here, we're done. Well, that took us um, maybe about seven years, and then we we're like, California's pulling, it's time. And so decided to, to move to San Diego, and then within probably nine months of actually figuring out that San Diego was the city in California that we're supposed to be in. We were here and and then we had to do a transition because we've opened practices and left them when we know the transition time from from having a practice and then starting a new practice and how the income comes in. And, and prior to this, when we moved, our children were all homeschooled. So it was really easy for us to, to move and just pick up and move. Well, at this time we had kids in private school, boarding schools and getting ready for college. So our expenses were a little different. So I stayed on the East Coast because we couldn't find anybody to practice in West Virginia. I'm not sure why. Uh, but and, and so Danny, my husband, came out and uh, took, you know, took on starting a practice here. And then eventually I moved out here. We still have the practice in West Virginia. We have a practice here in San Diego. And um, we're starting something new, which I won't be able to share on this yet, but probably within six months to a year. Um, it's something really, really exciting for chiropractic, for the chiropractic profession. And no, it's not a coaching and it's not a consulting. It's nothing like that. It's, it's about bringing more people into chiropractic and, and it has never done, been done before. So, oh, you know, maybe in a year, six months, we'll have to do another uh, podcast on that. Yeah, we would love to have you back. And so you've been all over the place. I mean, you New York, Atlanta, um, now San Diego. I mean, it seems like you're really spreading the chiropractic message far and wide and willing to move no matter how many logistical challenges you're running up against to make that happen. Is that the main reason for all the kind of transition and movement? Or you know, is there kind of I another reason? Now I, I understand what it was all about and what it's about. Uh, Dana and I are both activators. There's a, a test, test called Strength Finders, and I would recommend every chiropractic student, every person on the planet to take it. It's, it was designed by the Gallup Polls, and it's a 20-minute test, and it divides us up into 34 personality traits. 
and it'll give you a list if you want to buy the whole test from 1 to 34, what your top strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And it's just as important to know your weaknesses as it is your strengths because you don't even want to touch the weaknesses. It's going to create a bad energy. I happen to see that you had chakra or something on behind you. You have like chakras and these are energy centers in our body. Yes. And if you know anything about sacred geometry and the in the vibration and things like that. So if you're going to start attempt to work or be in a lower vibration, which nobody would want to be, that was would be when you were in one of your weaknesses. So the idea is that you stick to your strengths to move forward so you vibrate higher so things come to you easier. And at that time, we didn't know that we were activators. I mean, both of us are both activators, so we really enjoy starting things. Probably, well, I know on the bottom of his and, and mine too is consistency. So these 34 different personality traits, there's communication, command, activator, learner, relator, consistency, deliberative, and it just goes on and on and on. And, and it gives you a seven to nine page report when you take this. And so I can send you the link afterwards if you want to put it on the bottom so people can uh, can take the test. And, and it's amazing. So we didn't really know that we really enjoy starting things. And not everyone's like that. We thought everyone was like that because that's how we are. And so now we know we get, we're the starters and then we put people in places who don't like to move around, who don't like to start new things. And we always had an excuse why we we're moving. Oh, we're moving because of this. Oh, we're moving because of that. And now I realize that it's probably not. It's probably just, we just really enjoy starting, starting things. Yeah, and so have you always been a starter? I mean, is this something that um, you mm -hmm. were, when you were in chiropractic school, you know, back in the late 80s and 90s? Or is this, um, kind of something that new that you realized as you took the strengths finder test and as you recognize that you were continuously starting all these new great things and spreading them with the world. You know what, when you take the strength finder test, that's, it's really who you are from at a really young age. And what happens is uh, it just gets bigger or it gets smaller depending on if you're growing as a person or, or not growing as a person. So uh, oh, I'm sweating because I'm, my body's starting to heat up. It's like when you do an adjustment, you know, my, uh, my son, we taught, our, I know this is probably not something we should go on, but we, we, we taught our kids because we were homeschooling. I taught them how to adjust and, and, you know, can they correct spines? They've done some pretty serious changes. And I said, I don't care if you're a chiropractor, but I always want your family to be adjusted. And my son, when he would go and he would adjust and he'd go, gosh, mom, my hands, they get so hot. And he would always start to sweat. So, you know, when the energy starts to increase in the body. So I was like, wow, I'm starting to sweat now. Uh, so is it something that I always, it, it is who I am. Yeah. And and so the startup of Cairo Wonderlux is just a natural thing for us to do. Uh, Danny has started numerous projects here. He's constantly involved in a CCA and different things. So that's who we are. And, and my advice is don't be like me or don't be like anybody else. Be like you, you know, whatever that strength is, whatever your vibration, whatever that flow is for you, find it, you know, and that's not easy. I mean, he and I are both in our 50s and we are just now getting that. And if we can help someone who is younger, who wants to figure out how to do that, that's awesome. I would, I would love to assist or guide or anything possible to have that person have this and not experience 25 years of chaos because that's kind of how I felt it was and because I wasn't sure what I was looking for because I was going after what the general public said we were supposed to do or middle America or society or the whole world of accumulate, accumulate, be on top, look good, act this, do this. And not that we were, I mean, we were always did everything opposite of what everyone else did, but it was it's still in the back of our mind constantly, you know, oh, and it's really good that if you do this and you have this schedule and you wake up in the morning and you do this because routine is where it's at. I, I don't have a routine. I don't like to get up even, you know, you read these books and they're like, you know, especially we call them executors. So in the strength finders, there's four, four personality groups within 34 personalities. One of them is executing, which is a person who is consistent, gets things done, their room is clean, their car is clean, they won't go to bed unless they finish a project. Oh, that sounds like me. <laughs> is that, that's awesome. Yeah. I want, I, Danny and I both want more of that. <laughs> and then we have 
the influencing who are myself and, and Danny, like all I want to do is influence people all day long. Usually their practices are pretty good because they're really good at marketing. They're really good at getting out. And then we have the relationship building. And, and a lot of these are more of like a network type practice. Like their office offices are usually a mess. There's people all over. They're constantly talking, but everybody loves them. They're like great. And then the last group is strategic or analytical. And these are the thinkers. These are the people who are futuristic, um, let's see, analytical, uh, learner, intellection. And so there's that other group there. And basically our world says that we should be either in executing, which is basically doing everything right on the outside and it looks great and everybody walks to your house and you, everything's perfect. And everybody thinks that your life is perfect even though that you know that because structurally it looks nice, you still have internal battles like everyone else. Then we have the, the uh, strategic or the learner, which is where the education comes in. And everyone says, oh, if you're really high in learner and really high in that, then you're smart and then you're gonna get great jobs kind of thing. And you know, the people who are like that are usually not as personal. So their, their challenges are that they don't have as, I don't wanna say as much feeling, but they're really into thinking. So they don't, and then you have the relationship building who are, you know, they're lovey, lovey, dovey. And, you know, you may find them on the street corner giving out free hugs. <laughs> this is so valuable. I mean, this information of, of understanding who you are as an individual and then being able to put that into practice. And, and that's something that I've always admired about you and Danny. I feel like you guys kind of, um, you know, go to a different rhythm or go to the rhythm of your own drum. It's something that, uh, both of you, I think, are really good at. And so um, in terms of Strength Fighters or in terms of your own journey, uh, how would you recommend people kind of uh, move with their own rhythm or get more in touch with their own intuition so they're not as subjected to these kind of external pressures? Lately, I've been listening to a lot of Abraham Hicks. Uh, are you familiar with Abraham Hicks? I am, yeah. And I, for the last couple years, probably, well, yeah, no, maybe a year and a half. Um, I started having pretty massive migraine headaches, which doesn't make sense because I went to chiropractic care. I have this, I have that, you know, everything should be fine. My diet's really good. And, but it was debilitating to where I didn't, I wasn't able to do anything. And, you know, and I don't go to the doctor. Somebody goes, maybe you should go check and maybe, you should, maybe you have a tumor. I'm like, I don't do that. I'm like, if I do, I have to deal with it. I have to figure out how to deal with it. I don't even want to know, even if I did. But I started, I stayed home a lot and I started listening to Abraham Hicks and, and, and he, she, they, whatever, basically says the thing that you need to do to get to what that is for yourself is the thing that makes you happy. And, and you go, what does that mean? And basically it means is that even as a student, it's definitely harder because your goal is to get through school and you don't want to study and you don't want to do this and you'd rather go for a walk on the beach. But you really, your end goal is to finish school. So it's like, all right, I don't want to do that, but that's what I need to do. So maybe on your time off or on a student's time off is, what do I really, really want to do? You know, do I want to sleep? Do I want to go for a walk on a beach? Do I want to go out to have dinner? You know, it's like really being honest with yourself. You know, do I want to go do yoga? Do I want to just hang out with friends? And, and don't do things because you think you should do them. Like, oh, I need to go home and visit family because it's the right thing. Because what's going to happen is going to drain your energy. And, and, I, and I feel bad. I mean, I have three boys and I love when they come home. But, you know, those are the shoulds. You know, oh, I should go and clean my car or I should go and do this or I should go volunteer at this thing because I know it's a good thing. But if you don't have that feeling of that, this is what I really, really want to do, then don't do it. And I, and I think that that's, if I would have known that years ago, we probably wouldn't have traveled and moved all over the place. And I had an experience yesterday. I was on, I don't know if you can see, I have a, a yoga swing in the back. Yeah. Because about six months ago, I kept feeling I needed to be inverted. I kept saying, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And so I bought an inversion table. No, no, no. For me, no go. I didn't like the hold on the ankles. Didn't feel right. Subluxated me. I'm like, no. So I ended up with a yoga swing. So now I've been inverting, linting the spine. I feel really good. Well, I flipped off yesterday and hit my foot. Ended up on crutches last night. 
And my thing is, why, why did it happen? Why did it happen? And my girlfriend said, you weren't present. And I go, I don't know. I don't think so. And it's probably true, but there's always a reason. Like, and um, because I've been writing a lot of content for the thing that we're doing, I did it the day before, and I assumed I was going to do it yesterday. And I was like, good, I'll get this done. This is great. I'll get it done. I'll get it done. This is good. I'm, I'm in a flow. What I really wanted to do was I wanted to go plant succulents. That's what I really, really wanted to do. And I wouldn't allow myself to take three hours off to go buy some and put them in pots. And, and I know, this is what I feel, is that's why that happened. You know, and because I would, why out of scarcity, out of fear of that's one more day I could be moving closer to this goal. And then you go, what is the goal? Like, what is our goal? Is it, is the goal is to get this thing started and make it happen? Or is the goal the process of moving along and experiencing every day and, and enjoying everything that I do? And I'm like, okay, okay, I got it. So I'm going to start listening more of like, really, what do I want to do? And because Abraham says, don't be scared. Don't be worried. You know, if you take that next step, that feels right. And it's really hard because we've been programmed for so long. Your generation's better than ours, but we've been programmed for so long that if you do the thing that doesn't seem like the thing that's going to take you to that goal, then it's wrong or it's not good. You're not going to get there, but the universe lines up for you. And when it does, you don't have to do anything. Like people come out, people meet, you know, like the, the so, so called of getting people in your practice. You know, I never, never liked that. Are you going to get me? Like if somebody came and said, oh, I want to get you in my business. I'd be like, ooh, you know, so what about the flow of creating the energy, enough energy that people are going to be drawn to you or they're looking for you at the same time. So it's like, oh, it's, it's a meeting of the hearts. It's a meeting of, of, of our spiritual experience. Not so much here, here, I'm taking this thing here fill out this, oh, look, you have back pain. Here, you need to come in. I'm like, it. and yeah, you can you can hit work really, really hard and do that, but what kind of, what is that? You know, that's what, that's to get your numbers up, to get a bigger practice, to have this feeling of success. And yes, you are helping people, which is true, but why not create it to where there's a rhythm and a flow and it's it's easier? And I, I feel like it's, as a, it's a flow as opposed to a force. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up because um, one of my favorite authors, Derek Sivers, he always says, uh, it's either a hell yes or a no. And there's no in between. You either know like, hell yes, I want to do this. This is exactly what I want to do or no. And there's there's no in between. And so um, in terms of this flow, I feel like that ties in really nicely to Cairo Wanderlux and what you're creating because I feel like you're kind of creating a container for people to get in touch with that flow and kind of find that rhythm and pattern that really works well for them. So I wonder if you'd talk a little bit about that experience that you're creating. You know, I, we've gone to so many seminars and in chiropractic and outside of chiropractic that were, I want to say Tony Robin type seminars. I never did Tony Robin. I went to one of them, but, and, and, but they were that type of seminar workshops for the last 25 years. And what I would notice is I would come home and I would have all these goals and, and it would be a lot of energy and, and my body would be like shaking and I'd be excited. And, and then within either three days or even three weeks, I, I would be done again. And I'm like, wow, I need another one. I need another one. And then I, I stumbled on to, um, it's called Long Dance. It's a group of 60 to 75 women in the Olympic Peninsula in, up in Seattle area that do a dance all night. And I was invited by a chiropractor and, well, actually she told me about it and I said, I wanna go and I ended up there and, and I found out about the Native American ceremonies about dancing all night, which is basically Sundance. Sundance, I don't know if, are you familiar with Sundance? I am, yeah, I have a, a roommate who's currently involved in the Sundance. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, for people who don't know, I mean, we all know the film festival, but Sundance, is designed and I think it originated in the Grand Canyon where the Native Americans would dance all night to bring in good energy. And then the day before they would do a, a sweat lodge to cleanse that energy so they could have new stuff coming in. So they would let go and then it would all come back in. And so my, I would say my true spiritual journey conscious, because I think I've always been on a spiritual path, but not as conscious 
was when I went to long dance and I, and I came back and my whole life had, it's not like it changed like, oh, you know, the sky's super blue as opposed to, opposed to cloudy, but it was different. And the way I see things and the way things happen are, are different now. And, and when I went to that, I go, gosh, that would be really amazing to have something similar like this for chiropractors. And, um, and then I, I, I we did a, a camping. We called it our first annual uh, Cairo camping trip down here in San Diego, and we had about fifteen people, which was which was nice. Um, but and I did all the cooking, and I did all the stuff, and I did all the research, and I did everything. And then I said I would never do another one. Like I'm not doing it again. I'm done. And then uh, I started going to kind of festival things, which is kind of strange because. I'm more very I mean, straight laced type person. Um, probably I call them like a wannabe crunchy. And so I started going to a couple just local things and it was interesting. I'd never been around anything like a festival before. And then um, I went to an all night dance here and, and I know when I came off the mountain, even though we made jokes about how strange it was and how interesting the people were, that's how we put it, interesting. Never seen anything like that before. and but I was different and there was nothing that happened. There was nothing that happened. I mean, I danced around a fire and I was different. And then I started hearing about ceremony, like what ceremony is. And then, um, there's, an, it was, uh, March is my birthday. And I told Danny, I wanted to go to this thing. And cause I knew he wouldn't go with me unless it was my birthday. It was called portal to the new earth. And I said, let's go. And he's into sacred geometry. And, He's like, okay. And so immediately he signed up for it and it is at the location where Cairo Wonder Lux is. So the location is up. Um, it's actually not in Joshua Tree. If you know anything about Joshua Tree, you're heading from LA, you're heading east and then they call it the high desert. And the reason it's the high desert is because it's at 3000 feet. So we're, we're looking, there's pretty high up and it's a desert, which is amazing. So instead of going straight out to Joshua Tree, you'll go north a little bit. So it's a little bit north. And it's, I guess if we went to the top of the hill, you could look down on Joshua Tree. And it's 650 acres. The guy Garth bought it about 30 years ago with the intention of putting something like this on. So for 30 years, he's been, he's not manicuring the land, but he's leaving the natural habitat, but it's really beautiful. And he has a natural spring on it, which is amazing. There's a crystal grid that goes through the property. So there's a, a high energy vortex when you're, when you're on there, you feel it. And it's still at the same time. Some of the, um, there's no houses on this piece of property, but he does have living structures. He has a couple of teepees he's, and he's got a couple sleeping structures that are built into the boulders which are amazing. So we're looking at, I mean, these boulders are, I don't know, anywhere from eight to some of them 20 feet high. And he'll have, so there'll be a boulder here, another boulder here, and then you walk in between and there's like a platform. And so, and then he's put a roof on it. So you're actually like sleeping in the boulders. And when you, when you walk in, you just go, wow, because all the, the vibratory stuff that we have going on here is not there. And just, you talk about healing. I mean, you feel it. Then you go back outside, you're like, oh, wow, what a difference. So when we went, when Danny and I went, um, and this festival was quite interesting also, uh, we were the, the most REI type looking people there. I mean, we were like camping. So we have like our REI chairs. And, you know, meanwhile, they have like burning man outfits and stuff. And we're like, and it was just, it was really good though, because they were beautiful people. I mean, they, they were just, you know, they come up and they just be like, oh, and we're just, I'm like, okay, I'm so new to this. And maybe you've done festivals. So it's pretty new that to see somebody to show up with no barriers, to have nothing on them. And so when we left, we we're like, oh, it'd be cool if we, you know, get something going up here. And that's kind of how it started and then we came up to do life 201 up at life west and and i was hanging out with brooke and i told her about this place and i said let's do a camping trip she's like let's do it let's do it let's do it let's do it and i go all right you got to help me i said i'm not doing it by myself and then andrea got involved and she's like yeah yeah we'll help and then 
there was a fluke with my flight and I was, I stayed at the school and then there was a CCA student board meeting, which I used to be involved with the student CCA. And we sat down and I was just listening and they're going, I don't know what to do about, you know, we need to get more people and how do we get them in and enrollment. And, and I was just like, I have this idea and they jumped on it and they're like, that's exactly what we're looking for. So that's awesome. how the whole, yeah, that's how that whole thing started. That's so powerful. And I, and I love the idea of, of ceremony. I feel like so many of the kind of the personal development oriented things are about giving you skills and techniques, but ultimately um, I think it's from what comes, <clears throat> excuse me, what comes from the inside and there's no better way to get in touch with that than than ceremony or dancing all night or doing things that are uh, uncharacteristic. And every ancient and indigenous and traditional culture in the entire world has had some sort of ceremony, whether it's fasting or dancing or fire ceremony. And so to to kind of get back in touch with those roots, um, I think is super important. And especially for us as a as a chiropractic community. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about the logistics, you know, how to, how to get involved, where to find more information, you know, how to take part in this uh, amazing experience that's being provided? Yes, we have a Facebook group going now that's disseminating the information presently. We're working on a website. We're going to be getting flyers and then the flyers will be put up to schools. So, excuse me. Um, I know that we were like on time. <laughs> we're like, okay, we're at 30 minutes. But there's a couple things that I wanted to talk about about why this is important as a group, not just individually. Um, I don't want to talk about our past because it, it, it's not relevant to where we're going. But I, I do feel like there needs to be a cleansing in, uh, for all of us, not just personally, but as a, as a group. And I don't like to use the word profession because I don't like any words that we've used in the past because there's stuff tied to them. But as our unit or whatever we want to call it, that there needs to be, a, 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 whether it be a new starting point. And I spoke to a woman who said that she was in chiropractic for a couple of years and then she got out and she actually burned her diploma because something was saying, don't do it because there was so much fighting within the profession. And some students know this, some students don't, most of them do. Um, I spoke to a girl here who just graduated uh, maybe six months ago and her dad was a chiropractor and she said after three months of being in school, she almost quit because her dad was not involved with any of the politics or anything like that. And she had no idea that there was anything going on except chiropractic was love, chiropractic was love, chiropractic was love. And then she was like, wow. And so, Cairo Wonder Lux is about bringing chiropractors together. It's about bringing the students together. If we start here, you know, there's, it doesn't matter what, what uh, belief you have. It doesn't matter what um, technique you do. Um, there are, are some schools that don't focus on chiropractic as much as others, and we want them to be involved just as much as the ones that are. And not that we want them to be involved more. We just want everyone to be involved. I mean, there are some schools that kids are, and this is just recently, we just found this out, fifth quarter have never done an adjustment. There are students that are graduating chiropractic schools that have never had spinal x-rays of themselves. There are students that don't know how to do a leg check when they graduate. I'm not saying that you have to do a leg check, but let's just say that it's not even, it wasn't even part of their academic re requirement. And so what I want to do is I want to put chiropractors, not the ones that are selling their stuff, not the ones that are selling their programs. I want to put local chiropractors on stage. It's, it's kind of like a stage. We call it a stage at Cairo Underlux, and they'll adjust three people and the students will be watching and I want them to take notes. You know, why did that person do this? Why did they do this? And, and I want the chiropractor to explain to them, well, this comes from Gonstead and this is analysis, this, and this is what I picked up and this is what I learned because your practice is going to be you. It's going to be who you are and all the knowledge and all the experience that you've ever done. And if you decide to be a gondroid or upper cervical only, then that's fine too. That's what speaks to your heart. 
but that doesn't make somebody else's practice not as well or beautiful or great or as yours because they've pulled things. And I, and I want the, the students to experience different ways of taking care of people, you know, different ways of removing the subluxation. And as a, as a practitioner, we get people all the time, well, we need somebody here, we need somebody there. And they go, but we want them to do what you do. And I said, it doesn't matter if they do what I do. If they're connected with their heart, with their with what they're doing, whatever that is, just go. Healing doesn't come from this, that, whatever. I mean, it, it's part of the physical application, but healing really comes from the two people connecting. So that's that's a really big thing for me with Cairo and Lux is to, to create our group again. And then the chiropractor that told me, the one that burned her, her um, diploma, she said, uh, she goes, why would we ever have, a, how could we ever grow as a profession if we're fighting amongst ourselves? And I thought about it and I go, if our next door neighbors were fighting all the time or a family member, would I want to go hang out in their house? Would I want to hang out with them at all? And because what we have is chiropractic and, and, I shouldn't have to say how amazing, how incredible, and all this kind of stuff it is. I mean, we are 100% in love just in it. I mean, chiropractic is who we are. So why hasn't it moved forward? You know, and are there people in the world that are stopping us? A few. I mean, out of all the millions, maybe 100 people are really, really against us. Maybe. Like, really, like, you know, that actively do seek things out to, to hurt us. So what is it? You know, is it us? Is it because we make a judgment because, and I am not for drugs and chiropractic, but am I going to hate the guy because he's wanting drugs and chiropractic? You know, he's still a person. He still believes that's what, for whatever reason, I think it would be easier if he would see a way of, of not having drugs in the profession as opposed to me telling him he sucked. I can't believe you do this, you know, blah, blah, blah. So if we can... Uh, I don't want to say all encompassing, but if we can let down the walls on that, maybe that's what it is. And then we can agree that we disagree and that's just the way it is. And I'm not, and I'm not into politics anymore at all. I'm, just, I'm into spreading love and chiropractic. And that, that's, that's how this, this, this came about. I mean, that's, I, I think it's time. And I, and I think this physical location, the, the things that we're bringing into doing it, we, we have some Native American type ceremonies. We also have a crystal bowls healing, and which is definitely new age as a vibrational thing for vibrational healing. So it's like we're bringing this here and then this here to here to above, down, inside out. Yeah, above, down, inside out. I, I love that you say that. That totally speaks to me. And um, and I feel like we're on parallel paths. I feel like uh, DC to be revolution, you know, what Brooke and I are creating here is uh, trying to get all the different schools to collaborate and coordinate and uh, to stop the divisiveness that begins at the school level as we kind of feel like we're in competition with all the other schools so that there, uh, at least a dialogue is created. I'm reminded of um, uh, old, old school Buddhism where the two best scholars from each school of Buddhism would meet and debate and the person who uh, would win that debate, all of the students from that school of Buddhism would start to follow that student. And not that we need to do it that way in chiropractic, but just uh, giving people an opportunity for healthy, conscientious, heart-centered debate so that we can see each other's differences and accept those differences and go our own way, but instead, uh, but not fight against right. the differences that are there. And so, so glad that you're doing, creating this event and uh, promoting that, um, that process within chiropractic. I think it's so important. And then, so one of the other things, we, we do have a secret uh, Facebook uh, group if anyone's interested just you can post it on the regular Facebook say I want to be part of it These are the ones that the I don't I don't even want to call them leaders because that's an old term But these are the ones the organizers that are putting some time and energy into this and so we're working on getting a Google hang, Google hangout for the I Don't want to say I need some new terms. It's like these terms are so old um, 
like the most influential students in each campus and and I'm gonna have to like rewrite some of these because those are those are things that I don't they they have a bad feeling when I say them so I'd say the 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 most visible person who's who's the most excited that wants to 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 take this on we need somebody from each school to be the head person for that school and then they can have multiple people with them helping them but you know as far as conversing back and forth if we can get what do we have 12 schools is that uh, yeah that sounds right to me yeah, yeah. Right, around, right around 12 you know we get somebody from each one and and there's some that I have never been connected with I mean Bridgeport I've never been connected with and then I know TCC is another one that I hear bad stuff about you know and I'm like I it doesn't matter you know these people are going into chiropractic and and they have a draw for some reason and they get they get a degree and you know I don't know how they're gonna practice and even if they are gonna practice and that's a whole different podcast of you know really making sure that people take their I don't want to say make sure but they that they have their degree and they feel comfortable having a business or or sharing what they have with the world and still being able to maintain a lifestyle that they desire so I think that um, and a support system is is always the way to go and if we can get together the younger younger in the chiropractic uh, career to get together and, and make those have those friendships I think it's I think it's really good yeah I completely agree um, and so we're at time I thank you okay. so much for doing this interview and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your strategies and your uh, passion and excitement and all your new projects and we'll um, you know, we'll take everything about Cairo Wanderlux and Strength Finders and everything else that you mentioned. We'll put those in the show notes so people Great. can access that easily um, and follow up on the information that you've provided. And um, I just wanted to ask if there's anything you'd like to close with, any kind of last um, uh, call to action that you'd like to uh, put out there for people watching. Call to action? Probably not. You know, if you're feeling it, if you if you have a feeling and you have that and you feel, I. I on Facebook if you feel that tug that pull then then, then do something you know I mean that's that's it you know it, it's slowing down enough to know that feeling and to to to, to step forward and to, to take action on that and at that time I don't like actions another one of those words it's like gosh it's it's a have to so it's more and I'm not saying that you can't say that I'm just saying that you know I mean we have so much in our language it's like uh, yeah, if you if you feel feel it, and then see if it's you know figure out a way to create it. Uh, we're everyone. We're all here to help students get there. I think financially, if we can get this together, that we can help each other. So anyone who really desires to be there can get there. Awesome! I'm so glad that you ended with that because I feel like coming from the heart and feeling things through through is really what. Um, what differentiates you from a lot of other chiropractors out there. So I'm so glad you ended with that and, and we're able to um, kind of tie everything up. So uh, thank you once again for being yeah, a part of this. You. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll be able to spread the word and um, thank you everybody for watching our uh, DC to be revolution. Feel free to subscribe to our channel or um, to leave comments below. And um, yeah, thanks again. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye.